Hey there, Dangas Chu here. Today's video is about fixing a four-stroke outboard that leaks oil and is proudly sponsored by marineengine.com. With this outboard, we're not talking a little leak. It had a pretty catastrophic leak. So first step was to take the power head off and see where it was coming from. All right, let's start by seeing if there's any oil left in this thing at all. All right, let that drain and we'll start undoing all sorts of little things like uh, linkages, throttle gear linkages, battery leads, battery switches off. Rather than taking the whole thing off at once, I think I'm gonna take the power head off while it's here, nice and easy to work on here and uh, then we'll take the midsection off separately. So, positive lead. All right, negative lead here. All right, as usual, where possible, we're gonna try and put everything back so we don't lose anything. Around the corner here, Adrian's working on a bit of a barge. Let's go annoy him. It's my favourite hobby. What you doing, Uncle Adrian? I'm doing nasty things with a very nasty pool. It's a bit of a beast, isn't it? Nice. So how much did we cut off it? So I cut all this off, cut all the back deck off. Yep. All of that. <laughs> all that with that beautiful tool. So I'm just trimming up all the edges now where the welds are. Yep. And we're gonna um cut the transom. Right here. Yep. Both sides and pull it out to twelve degrees. Okay. Is this well, how many degrees is this? We think that's about ten at the moment. Gotcha. So it'll come out just past there. there. So it's going from a single inboard to twin outboards. Yeah. Very get rid good. of the get rid of the Volvo pushy power thing <laughs> and we're going to put in and rewire a new console up the middle so yep console will be here we're going to run this boat upside down yeah it's a good idea i like that idea yeah so um unorthodox quite, but interesting different yeah all right now we're just going to jump into these bolts and get these control cables out so we can leave them all the controls are staying with the boat all right that's just a little cover that holds everything in so that and it's two bolts we'll put back. All right, the only one left now is this one, which is the pressure tube for the Speedo that goes down to the bottom of the gearbox. Under the rubber seal for the Morse cable, there's another little uh, 10 mil bolt there to get the control cables out. So now we're gonna have fuel line coming from the socket here to the fuel filter. So we'll just disconnect that there. All right, next thing I do is look at this gear selector under here. Obviously this is some sort of in gear, you know, starting gear, neutral switch. But I think if we just unbolt the bracket from the block and then the arm from here, we should be able to lift the power head up and leave all that behind. Okay, in here, I'm gonna take these pins out so that we can separate the gear selector from the block. All right, having a look at it, I'm gonna take this whole arm out by undoing this other R clip as well. Okay, next up is wires for the trim tilt. We'll leave that behind. It's kind of in the lower cowling. A few more plugs, water sensor for the fuel filter right. here. Now the bolts down the bottom here, and then we'll gently lift it. If we miss something, we'll undo it, but I think we've got most things now. So, looks like only the front four on each side hold the head on. Something's stuck at the front. Well, the front didn't want to come up. So it's probably just select. I think we're going to, we're, I think we're physically going to run out of height with that bar. Yeah, I think it's the gear select. Yeah, 
forklifts are excellent tools for testing the tensile strength of any bolts you've forgotten, but in the end we got it off. Ready? Yep, go for it. Not seeing any catastrophic corrosion anywhere. No. So is it the seal at the bottom of the crankshaft? Not far right there. But and it was this bolt here too that we got the it was around here we had the oil, wasn't it? Yeah, which was just on this side here. So that's water here. So the water yeah, but that's your exhaust, isn't it? So water goes out the exhaust. But where was the oil coming out of? Well, that's it. We don't really know. But it's not looking like anything catastrophic. Okay, now, steering cable, mounting bolts, off. Give the boat back. This is a classic uh, problem with steering cables. Turn the collar and the cable should stay still, but it's moving with the collar because of this corrosion here. So we need to kind of grip the cable itself and turn them independently. So there we go, you can see that corrosion falling away now. All I did then was hold it with the multi-grips, the channel locks. That wasn't too bad. Sometimes you need vice grips, sometimes spray, heat, whatever. But in this particular instance, wasn't a huge amount of corrosion. At this stage, Adrian and Phil had to flip the barge back over, so took a break from the outboard and helped them do that. Then we took the outboard up to the workshop. Do you want me to get Mitchell to help you in there? Yeah, as long as you've got his on. How are you now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Go up a bit. Over, over, okay. yeah. There you are already. Oh, uh, it's inside the tyre. Mate, we thought of everything, don't you worry? Yeah, the holes, the light's right inside it. And touchdown. Well, there we go. Turned over. Time to go to the pub. Well done, say good night. Say good night, good mates. Love you, bye. Phil and his daughter are doing this barge up. It's in survey for doing tours because sadly, with all this rain, all the oysters have died. Once again, if it's not QX virus, palms, fresh water, so many uh, hardships these oyster farmers have faced. It's amazing to see them uh, you know, finding ways to reinvent the business and stay on the river.
once they're up and running again, I'll share details. It's pretty cool. Go around the river, see how they're growing, where they're growing, that kind of thing. So, yeah, hope it goes well for them. Detroit uh, heat exchanger. Ford engine, did you say it is? Ford Mazda. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. FOMOCO. <laughs> Outboard fuel tank with the diesel line returned it here. And, then, uh, and a water-cooled exhaust. Water-cooled exhaust. Yamaha uh, throttle control. Yep. And a big water pump. That's a nice bit of oyster farmer engineering. Yeah, she's wild, eh? <laughs> I love it. So this is the seal we suspect is leaking. Uh, I also have it on good authority that there's a lip on the outside of the seal. The new one's actually been ordered and it's arrived at Pat's, so I might ring him and just confirm that is the case. If it does have that lip on the outside, you have to split the crankcase to get it in. You're going to go do it up, was it left handed? Uh, that wasn't. What? <laughs> Some entry bolts, eh? That long. Mm. Yes. Better. That's better. We we'll just put the rattle gun on the top. Yeah, but I think it's a taper. Now we're going to need to load him up. Yeah. Tap it, heat it. Tap, tap. Yeah. Bit of pull. Yep, you can try it. The lip on the outside of the seal certainly makes changing it much uh, trickier than it would be otherwise. You know, all up it wasn't that much time, but uh, yeah, certainly a lot harder than just putting a screw in and pulling it out, for example. Some of you also probably yelling at the TV screen saying uh, there's a bit of corrosion that none of us have seen yet. And yes, we really didn't notice until much later, despite, uh, you know, five of us looking quite intently for it. We were just focusing too much on the edge where the gasket sits and not a little bit deeper in, goes to show. Coming apart. So this is the uh, always inaugural plastic bracket that is a... Yeah, I of. should have taken that off. Rectum. Oh, well, there we go. Yeah, it does have a little lip, see, it goes in. It does, too. Just straight. Yeah. Hence all this hassle compared to sliding it in and out. Yeah, yeah. And the, but the front top seals, it's a slip in and out. Well, so we're going to put this in the after bark in the back. Yeah, totally. Give it a week or so, I reckon. Yeah, a week yeah, or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aluminium loves that. What do you reckon? Well, yeah. you'd probably just be able to go... Yeah, lever it a little bit. With the bar? Yeah. Where'd that little bar go? I don't know. We'll use this conrod here. It's strategically placed for the removal of crankshaft seal. Okay, it's done. Quite soft, isn't it? I I'm just trying not to um, be the butcherous. Ah, there we go. Yeah, I'm wondering. No, I'm not. And it might not be the seal itself leaking, mm, but the really. out traveling the outside. After cleaning up some of the mud and debris in the raw water. Uh, return port we noticed that there's a oil return pipe that actually goes through that cavity perhaps to try and cool the oil a bit who knows why they're connected but this is where the majority of the leak obviously was coming from I'm cleaning it up with a little bit here with the die grinder so we can weld it eventually but to start with we're going to put the new oil seal in because that was leaking a little bit and then we'll have fixed all the leaks while the power heads off Before installing the new seal, we're going to put a shaft repair sleeve on to the crankshaft using this particular sleeve and tool. So we'll show you that first. The purpose of these sleeves is to give the lip of the oil seal a smooth surface to run on. If you put a new oil seal onto a crankshaft that's 
cut up, pitted, corroded, the rough surface will cut the oil seal straight away and it'll fail very fast. Now, do you put any Loctite? I, I usually put a little bit of um, either aviation gasket goo or 515, oh, yeah. and it gives it a bit of something to slip on. Yes, it's a lubricant to start with. and then But also it also gives, and, mm. and considering we've got some little bits of... Bit of corrosion there bit too. Bit of corrosion there, it'll just fill bit up the little pockets color. I reckon. Yep, sounds good. So this is the patented Adrian Tanner technique for speedy sleeve, not, yeah, yeah, not the textbook put, one. Put the thinners on the rag, sniff that, and then wipe it on here. Um, a lot tighter got into these stupid tubes now, I don't like them. So rather than cutting the flange first, you go get can, it on a fair bit. Put it on a fair bit the best we can. Then we'll try and pick the flange off, and, and then, then I'll get a little nice aluminium plate, and we'll tap it right up as best we can. We've got to be careful, but if you have a look, there's a radius in the back, so you don't want to start pushing the sleeve up the radius. Ah, uh, gotcha. Yep. I'm going to stop just before that radius. Yep. So this will probably only get to. Yeah, it's too long, isn't it? It's too. And long. this was so the shortest careful. we could get. When it when it stops. It's, 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 you can see, that's where the tear mark is. Mm -hmm. So it's still not even going to cover the seal track until we push that on that last bit. Yeah, true. The seal track's quite high up, isn't it? Yeah. So we'll get that on. And these, because these are so thin, where we don't have to go to a larger internal diameter seal. We're using no, a factory, factory seal, yeah. Yamaha seal provided by Patrick from Sydney Mobile Marine. There it goes. I'm going to leave that like that to give me a bit of room to get the... Yep, to cut the flange. Cut. And you were saying if you cut the flange before you put it on, you find that it starts to splay it a bit. Spread and then yeah. it won't t wants to tear off. Yeah. Also, you can also use a little, if you're really good, mm -hmm. get a little chisel. You can hit it there and it'll actually start yep. to bust oh, it open yep. too. So. <laughs> Next time we compare cutting it first. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> right. Who needs to follow the instructions when exactly. you can do it our way? Here's our part, and we'll see when we get it out that it has this little lip on it that meant we had to uh, split the crankcase to get it in. Thinking, actually, it was Patrick's idea get the seal on before we trim the speedy sleeve so that we don't end up with a jagged edge that cuts the seal when we put it on. So. Tomorrow I'll go and fix the boat trailer. Yeah, you know, give it a little bit of... Yeah, I reckon, so we put a bit of... So we only need to go halfway around the seal at the moment. Yeah. That's it. Done. Well, I'm there, and we lined up there. Okay. All right, so uh, now is that bearing still? Yep, it's back in place. Now, does that what stops it floating around this way? No. Hmm. Like there's no. Look at it, nothing. Nothing. Like there's nothing to stop the bearing shell wanting to spin. Spin or um. Or move. Move longitudinally. Yeah, I don't like that. Don't like it at all. Yamaha. With the sleeve and the new lower crankshaft oil seal installed, it was time to start cleaning up the crankcase, get some 515 sealant onto it and get it bolted up. Never sneeze. Do you want me to put some on your glasses? No thanks. They'll never stick to your head. True. True. Good point. Uh, all right. What about under your door handles? That old chestnut. Yeah. I wouldn't do anything like that to anybody. Look at the crankshaft stretchy. Oh, look at that. One more click. That's it. Bingo. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Miss me. All right, we just got to figure out where this earth lead might have gone. I'll ask Adrian. 
All jokes aside, things are uh, falling into place quite nicely. By the time you fold everything back, it's very close to where it used to go, so it's all pretty obvious. The rest of the ancillary stuff went together pretty smoothly, so the final job now was to trim that uh, speedy sleeve, the uh, crank repair sleeve, a little bit shorter so it didn't extend past the bottom of the power head. Last job now is to trim the speedy sleeve. So Adrian's just popped an o-ring here to stop any uh, filings going between the crankshaft and the oil seal. So we'll grind it back a bit, take the o-ring away, it should be ready to go. That's perfect. Beautiful. So, we are almost back to starting on the real problem. Yeah. One last job before heading home was to give the lower cowling a bit of a clean up. A, so we can uh, spot any other oil leaks more readily, but also because there's another seal that goes in the lower cowling here around the drive shaft to stop a salt water sort of coming up into the cowling as well. This is the seal that's going into the lower cowling. It's got an edge on it like this, flange on it, stepped, and has a seal both sides. Goes in here where the drive shaft goes through. So we'll pop that in. I just tapped that one in with a plastic mallet and this is what it looks like installed. The next job was to try and weld up the hole in the oil passage. First step in that was grinding all the corrosion and bad metal away. Turned out to be quite a challenge to weld it up because it was quite contaminated and a very awkward space as well. A lot of uh, sort of contamination is burning off as we go, so it's getting a little bit easier the more we do. But keep building it up. And the nice thing is, this is just a passage from here to the pump, which is covered. Uh, so we can both clean it out and hopefully just put a gauge on and pressure test it afterwards to give us confidence that it's good to go. Oh, there it is, I know. So I reckon if we put some pressure in and maybe spray or something. Yeah, and, just check, yeah. Because we can build up and up and up as much as we want. Well, you can fill it with water, you can fill it with a bit of oil in there. Or not, you don't want to fill it with oil, a bit yeah. of water. Or even a bit of thinners. Yeah. Petrol, whatever. Pressurise it. Just look for bubbles. Yeah. It was a funny thing welding this up. It probably took, I don't know, maybe half an hour, less than an hour certainly, to get it looking like it was completely filled, the hole. But another four hours to be chasing every little pinhole because it needs to be perfect and not just perfect when it goes out the door perfect for years to come so yeah it turned out to be quite a tedious afternoon to be honest as a result i ended up building the metal higher and higher to the point where the repair was now higher than the base of the power head may not be a problem actually it may even go into a cavity down there So, yeah, so it's, it's almost dead centre. Yeah. Yeah, I think the, the lumpy metal actually will, will not be in the way of anything. Yeah, we just got to keep the gasket surface flat. Going to start doing some pressure testing on the repair now, but first, cylinder head going on. Come on the floor, shoe. Two bags back, one bag, keep it over. Right, yep, yep, got two guides, folks. Here we'll be. Yep. That. Keep the swing. So start it. Yep. So this is for Billy. I'm going to squirt this in there for you, Billy. I made you a squirter. My friend Billy will know what we're talking about. Uh, 
That's full of water here. Yeah. Full of water there. And I did spill a little bit at the back there. I'm just going to mop up now. But. Not seeing any major leaks yet. Stu, you are the TIG welding guru. <laughs> the bugger weld, but. I'm, I'm, oh, hang on. Yep. Big one there. All right. No, 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 I don't think so. Wasn't it? I thought it. I reckon we put some pressure on it, a little bit of a couple of PSI and. Just want to. I just want to prove a point that I did. No, no that's poor. Got a pin a hole yeah. there. All right, cool. Oh, but well, that's, that's all right. Getting there. One of Adrian's neighbours, Joe, came down who does a lot of TIG welding, and he has very kindly given us a much smaller cup. So we're going to get in here now and do this bit we had trouble accessing before, just to get a bit more thickness in the metal for extra confidence. I think we've got the hole that the water came out of, but I'd rather see a couple of extra mil of aluminium on there for longevity. So let's get in there with the small, small TIG torch. We've got a fair chunk of weld on here, and we're now holding pressure. Depending on how well I hold my thumb, Get a pretty steady reading. So we need to dress this surface here for the gasket. This can stay up quite high because it goes down into a cavity and uh, give everything a really thorough clean. Make sure we don't have any, you know, bits and bobs of aluminium filings. Probably run it and then do an oil change straight away anyway, just to be on the safe side. But I think we've finally stopped our leaks. Well, thanks for watching. Unfortunately, I didn't get a chance to put this outboard back together completely before the end of this video. I'm already running late to get this one out, uh, but I think we're pretty much on top of it now. The new uh, lower crank seal and welding up the hole, and it should be good to go. In the meantime, I've also been busy trying to set up the workshop here a little bit better for filming. You can see a few new lights and various permanent cameras that I'm going to mount so that we can start doing more of the detailed bench work on various outboards. The first cab off the rank in that department is getting the old two-stroke 40 Yamaha back together. But in between those outboard videos, we'll also be looking at Adrian's new trawler as well, because we've been doing a lot of work on that at the same time. All right, take care. I'll catch you soon. See ya. Now they're everywhere. More parrots than you can poke a stick at. This is what happens when you don't eat fast enough. They're everywhere. There's too many of them to scare off now, isn't there, Daisy? Breakfast time's turned into chaos. Complete chaos. That's what happens. <laughs>